Hey all, so this is part three of 25 to life. So where I left off was an inmate confronting me, James Smith, and what he had to say. I was pregnant with my daughter, and in case I didn't say that in the last video, it was a girl. But the weird thing is, James Smith looked at me and I was standing in the hallway I was just walking down the hallway and he had a mop or a broom in his hand and he was working and he turned to me and he said good morning I said good morning and he said I have to tell you something I said what's going on very matter of fact but respectful and he said ma'am you know God told me that that's my child in there, that you're going to have a girl, and that's my child. I'm just letting you know. And he walked away. And my legs buckled. I couldn't catch my breath. I was like, oh my God. And actually, I didn't know it was a girl at the time. Um, I, I did know. I'm sorry. I did know it was a girl. And um, he must have overheard me talking to someone about it. Because that's how he figured out it was a girl. It wasn't like he was psychic. Or he had some ability to go, mm, you're having a girl. No. He must have overheard us. So all these things are going through my mind as I'm briskly walking down the hallway now. And I go straight to the medical administrator's office, who happens to be my mother. She was not my immediate supervisor, but she was in charge of the medical information records in that prison. So I walked in. I said, I have to talk to you. She said, what's going on? I said, may I shut the door? I shut the door. I explained to her what was said. Immediately, we called in a sergeant because that's a chain of command, notified the sergeant of what happened. Um, this is a very serious thing, not only because the inmate said it, but because now there's going to be an investigation because he said it about me. So now I have to prove that this is not an inmate's child. Mind you, I was pregnant when I started working there, so it's going to be very easy to prove, but... I still have to go through the motions because he made this comment. Obviously, he was crazy, but I had to prove that he was crazy and that I had nothing to do with him. So this long investigation goes into effect. He gets he gets moved to the box. Um, it's temporary. You can't move inmates to another prison. There's no other prisons on Oahu. Um, so it's not like you can move them and put a... Um, like a stay away order or something like that. You can't do it. There's no other prisons. Um, now they can ship inmates to the mainland and other prisons in the mainland will house them for Hawaii and they can get them away. Um, it was a very uncomfortable situation. Um, obviously, um, his accusations were false. Um, he was proven to be a little nutso, um, but it wasn't over. Because shortly after everything had calmed down, I would say a month or two, um, I received the package in the mail. And it wasn't a box or anything that would be frightening. It was just a manila envelope with like that bubble wrap in it. Um, I could feel something in it. I was like, what is this? And it was addressed to me. Um, it had no return address. Um, and it kind of scared me, but I was like, what is this? Um, so I looked at it. It didn't look suspicious, like a bomb or anything. It was just a small envelope. Um, and this is all uh, pre-9-11. Was it? Yeah, it was all before September 11th. So um, there was no, like, anthrax scare or anything. So I opened this package at home now. I'm at home. I got it in the mail. And I opened the package. And there's a box and a letter. And the letter is from James Smith's mom. Who apologized for everything that happened at work. And that my son 
was interested in getting to know me and possibly getting engaged. Now, as you might imagine, my jaw hit the ground and I nearly died. There was a box, a little box in the, in the envelope and I opened it up and it was a diamond ring, a solitaire diamond ring. I didn't know what to do. I was beside myself. I called my mother, told her what happened. Immediately, the next day, I brought it into work. I didn't bring it that day because I'm not going to go back to work. So I brought it into work the next day. Another investigation as to why this person was so infatuated with me. You know, here I am, maybe 24 years old, wet behind the ears, um, newly pregnant, uh, recently married, only a couple years, and this inmate just was so infatuated. And it 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 went from, oh my God, he's just crazy, leave it alone, to being scary. Because now he has ways of contacting people on the outside of prison to get them to interact with my life at home. Not cool. So this was an introduction into what can happen at prison, um, in prison, but not just in prison. You know, before it was go to work, come home, go to work, come home, watch your back, you know, pay attention. Um, <laughs> on a side sidebar, and it's not funny, but it is, people with ADD have to be very careful working in prison because if they get distracted and they're not paying attention and not focused, they could get hurt. Um, so that was just a sidebar. This, this did not scare me from working in prison, not at all. Um, in fact, it's just one of many incidents that people go through in prison. And um, this was my situation and I dealt with it. Um, I got over it. And after this incident, this reporting, him being reprimanded, it stopped. I don't know if he found infatuation with someone else. I don't know if, um, you know, maybe he learned his lesson, but nothing happened after this. No conversations, no comments, nothing in the mail. Did the officers do a little prison rough justice? I don't know. And if they did, I wouldn't mention it on here. Um, has it been known to happen? Yes, not in my instance, but I've seen um, instances where inmates that mess with women, civilians, nurses, um, end up with a little bit of rough justice after, say, hurting one. And believe it or not, a lot of times it's not the officers that mess with the inmates um, that disrespect women. It's the other inmates. They don't go for that. Um, there's kind of a code within prison. Like the inmates respect, as long as you respect them, they respect the female civilians, the nurses, the librarians, secret. They respect them because they give them respect back. You know, um, the nurses take care of them, give them their medication. Um, women who work in the kitchen feed them. So they're very respectful to the women. And when somebody messes with a woman in prison, they don't take kindly to that. It's like how people believe that if you're a sex offender and you're in prison, other inmates take care of business. Well, it's kind of the same with female employees. If you harass or mess with them, the inmates take care of business. So I, I don't know if that happened. Um, I'll never know because like I said, it stopped. It ended. Um, and the rest of my short career there, short, um, was really uneventful. I made a lot of friends, um, people that I'm still friends with today. I mean, that was, you know, 30 years ago and I'm still friends with them. Um, very close knit family type environment coming from a small island where the officers might be related to an inmate or a civilian staff might be related to an inmate. You know, it's, it's a very close knit environment. And I became friends with the officers, um, the supervisors. Um, and like I said, it's, it's that family 
Ohana camaraderie. And, you know, my mom still kind of wanted me to go into like engineering or healthcare or something of that nature. But working in the prison just reinforced my law enforcement bug. And I even considered becoming a female correction officer. But I really didn't know of any. Most of them were men. And I couldn't model myself after someone or look up to someone and say, oh, I want to be like her. Um, however, there were a lot of female police officers. So I, you know, I still wanted that, that. Um, in the meantime, I had applied to the Honolulu Police Department. Um, I wanted to be a police officer. And... I had also applied to be a Honolulu police radio dispatcher. Um, so I had my hooks in other things while still going and um, to work at the prison. And I know I was pregnant with my daughter. I hadn't had her yet when um, I got the call from the Honolulu police department. So my career at that prison would be over and a new career starting in law enforcement. Although working in the prison is still, prison is still law enforcement, this would be a different branch of it. Um, and it was uneventful. And a lot of the stories I have will be about when I get to New York and I get into law enforcement in New York. Um, most of the things in Hawaii, like I said, are uneventful. The department took care of me, took care of the people that work there. I never had problems. It was, like I said, good camaraderie. There was no bullying, no harassment in my eyes. It was a great department to work for. Like I said, when I moved to New York, things changed. Um, not only was it um, culture shock, it was a whole bunch of new horizons for me. Um, and I will get into that in a couple other videos. Um, but I just wanted to finish up the story about inmate James Smith and what happened at the prison and what he said and how um, it really opened my eyes on to, into what working in a prison was like, working in law enforcement, um, and the atmosphere and not trusting anyone, not trusting inmates, and um, just that whole experience. Um, yeah, so that was, um, that was that with that prison. And like I said, I, I went to work with Honolulu Police Department shortly thereafter. And it, it was uneventful. It was a good career. And I left Hawaii in... 1999 um so my daughter was about nine going on 10 it was 99 and um got to new york lived in a couple other places in between um if you have questions about the prison in hawaii the police department in hawaii um what i did in between hawaii and new york it was just a short stint um, feel free to ask. I'm going to do the next few videos on New York. Um, when I got to New York where I worked. Um, because I want to get to the prison system in New York. Because like I said, it's a whole different ball game when you get to New York versus Hawaii. And like I said, the culture's different. Attitudes are different. Um, the paramilitary paramilitary style is um, more intense and um, I don't
don't mean, I don't want, the prison setting itself is not, like an inmate is an inmate is an inmate, and the whole culture is the same, but it's just a lot harsher. Um, and I, I really want to get into probably the last 20 years of my career, because that's where it became hell on earth. And I really want to get into those videos because I want to, you know, I want to share what happened to me and my stories um, and see if it'll help other people. Um, so if you have any questions, please comment. I'd, I'd love to answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about um, a brief, my next video will be a brief um, introduction synopsis about New York. Um, what I did when I first got here, how I got into the prison system, um, working, of course, and what led up to the last like 20 years of my career. All right, so I will see you guys in my next video. Be safe, be well, and please be kind to one another. Take care. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so when I post a video, you'll be ready for it. All right, and I'll try not to let too much time go in between the next video so you have something to watch. All right, take care.